Welcome back everyone to Learn Invitation, we're in statics and today we're going to do problem 682, okay? It says a 5 pound force is applied to the handles of the vice grip. Determine the compressive force developed on the smooth ball tank 8 at the jaws. So we have our 5 pounds force being applied here, the handles, and we want to know how much is the force that this bolt is um, receiving in compression, okay? So in order to do this problem, we can either do it by looking up on the top part and being how much is the force going up or look at our bottom part and see how much force is being compressed from this side. So if we pay attention to our bottom part, which is the part that we're going to pick, we have besides our force on the ball and a we also have some forces at these joints that we there are bx by then bx and ey so if we pay attention and we were to do a moment around my point b all we will need will be ex and na that will be going down but since na is what i want to find all i need it's EX because all the reaction forces at my point B, like BX and BY, don't have a distance with respect to my point B and neither EY. So that's why we're going to pick this side. Now, the problem will be how much is this force EX? So, for that, what we can do is that we can use this other bottom part of our machine. So let's just start by drawing the free body diagram of our machine. So I'm going to start try to imitate the shape of this part. That's good enough. We're gonna call it free body diagram of bottom handle. Okay. And if we take this guy over here, what do we have? Well, first of all, we have our five pounds going up, given by the problem. Then we will have a force that we're going to call it FCD. Okay. Now, what will be the angle of this force FCD? So we need to know how much is rising. So it's rising this one inch plus this 0 0.75 inch so let's draw our sim like similar triangle here 1.75 inches and it's going to derive an amount of one inch plus three inches i'm sorry from this is from c to d so it's only three inches from here to here so we got three inches so this angle theta we can find it out by doing the inverse tangent of the opposite, which is 1.75 divided by 3. Okay, so we're going to take our calculator and we're going to calculate this inverse tangent 1.75 divided by 3. And will give us an angle of 30.26 degrees. Okay, so now we know the angle theta with respect to this and we're going to call it theta okay the missing forces that we have it's a point e we'll have an a y so a y and we'll also have an e x and our main goal is to find this e x so in order to do this we can solve it by doing a summatory of forces in the x so if we do summatory of forces in the x direction, assuming that going to the right is positive, what do we have? Well, we'll have positive EX, and then we will have positive uh, FCD multiplied by the cosine of my angle theta, and this should be equal to zero. So if we solve for EX, will be equal to negative FCD that we don't know yet multiplied by the cosine of our angle theta, which is 30.26 degrees 
okay? So we need to find this force FCD to know my value of the X. And we can do that by applying the summatory of moments around my point E. We're going to assume that counterclockwise is positive. And what do we have? Well, if I'm grabbing my part in here, point E, then the X component of this force FCD, if we pay attention in here to the main figure, the X component doesn't have a distance with it. So we only care about the Y component of this force FCD. So let's just start by that one. So I'm handling here my force going up. This will want to rotate my part counterclockwise. So we'll have a positive FCD, but the Y component, so meaning multiplied by the sine of theta, multiplied by the distance with respect to my point E. So in our main figure over here up, we'll check that this is equal to one inch, okay? So we multiply by one. And then the missing force that we have is this five pounds. This five pounds will also try to rotate my part like this because I'm holding here. So we have also positive five pounds multiplied by the distance and the distance between my point E and my point five pounds force is equal to these four inches. Okay, so multiply by four and all this should be equal to zero. If we solve for FCD, we will get negative five times four, that will give me 20 divided by sine of 30.26 degrees. Okay, if we use our calculator, this will give us what? So we got negative 20 divided by the sine of 30.26 degrees. So this will give me an equal of negative 39.7 pounds, okay? So we go back in here, we solve for EX and we got negative and then our answer, which is negative 39.7, multiply by the cosine of our angle theta and let's see what we get so we're going to the negative and negative cancel out we get positive value and we're going to multiply it our 39.7 times cosine of 30.26 degrees and this will give me an equal of 34.28 pounds okay so we figure out how much is EX. So as I stated before, now what we need to do is do the free body diagram of this part over here. So I'm going to try to copy down the shape of this figure in order to do my other free body diagram. And we're going to call it free body diagram of bottom jaw, okay? So I'm going to move this part out. So let me put it a little bit down in here. And what forces will we have? Well, we will have our forces at B that are going to be BX. We're going to have BY. We'll have EX and also EY and the force that we want to find, which is NA, okay? Now this NA, it's at an angle of 20 degrees with respect to the Y axis. So if we draw this a little bit better like this and we draw the Y axis going down like this, we'll have an angle of 20 degrees in here. And this is given in our main figure here okay if we apply a summatory a moment around my point B as we planned before assuming that going counterclockwise is positive what do we have I don't care about B or I I don't care about BX neither EY but I care about EX so I'm holding here and I have a force going like this this will try to rotate my part counterclockwise so it will be positive so ex 
multiply by the distance now we can go up and look that the distance will be one inch plus 0 0.75 so we'll have 1.75 now we will have na and okay so na will have two components both components are going to be doing the y component i'm sorry na the y component has a distance from here to here and we want to rotate my part counterclockwise because i'm holding here and then this force wants to go like this so we'll got positive na multiply by if we want the one component will be the cosine of this 20 degrees multiplied by the distance so we're gonna go up and look for the distance and the distance between my point a and my point b in this direction is 1.5 it's given in here okay so 1.5 and then all we're missing it's the x component which is going like this of this force and a we want to rotate my part again counterclockwise so we're gonna have a positive so we're gonna have plus and a multiplied by the sine of 20 in this case times the distance now the distance between my point a and my point b is this 0 0.75 so we got 0 0.75 and this should be equal to zero okay so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to convert cosine of 20 multiply by 1.5 as a number sine of 20 multiply by 0 0.75 as a number combine them and then i'm going to pass this ex to the other side and put it as a number so let's see we'll have na multiply by cosine of 20 times 1.5 will give me 1.41 plus sine of 20 plus zero point uh, multiply i'm sorry so sine of 20 multiply by 0 0.75 will give me 0 0.2565 and all this should be equal to negative ex which we found it to be 34.23 28 multiplied by 1.5 1.75 okay this will be equal to 60 so we got negative 60 and then na will be equal to 60 divided by the addition of those two so 1.41 plus 1.2565 will give equal to 1.666 and if we do this calculation we'll figure out that na is equal to 36.1 pounds okay so we figure out how much is this compressive force if you guys like the video please push the like button subscribe and i'll see you in the guys in the next one thanks